protocol of any MRI scan is defined by its planes, geometry, and sequences. Breast MRI consists of different sequences on three planes, sagittal, coronal, and axial. As mentioned before in our cross-sectional anatomy module, each plane best demonstrates different anatomical structures and pathological extension into the deep fascia. The majority of the MRI sequencing in breast imaging protocol are axial images. They are important for bilateral viewing of the anatomy. The field of view of these three planes should cover the nipples anteriorly to the apical lymph nodes, posteriorly, and both the breast and apical lymph nodes from the right to the left side. Coronal images are also frequently used for bilateral imaging. The coronal orientation can reduce heart pulsation artifacts, but it is a more susceptible to respiratory motion and flow artifacts because vessels tend to travel perpendicular to the slice encoding direction. Sagittal images are taken of each breast alone because of the large number of slices needed to cover the entire field of view. One stack could require double the number of slices. This also hampers the spatio-temporal resolution. The geometry applied in breast scanning protocol is as follows. The field of view in the anterior posterior direction varies from 200 to 220 millimeters. In the right left direction, it varies from 300 to 330 millimeters. And in the feet head direction, it varies from 180 to 200 millimeters. This can vary depending on the size of the breast of the patient being imaged. Slice thickness is three millimeters and the gap is zero millimeters for all the planes. This is a requirement for high quality detailed breast MRI. If the slice thickness used was more, some small focal lesions of five millimeters or less would be undetectable. Voxel sizes are about 0.85 to one millimeter. And the number of slices also depends on the size of the patient's breast. Axial images may vary from 60 to 65 slices, sagittal from 40 to 50 slices, and coronal from 50 to 60. Depending on each department's clinical practice, different sequences are used, utilized for breast imaging protocol. Here's a list of the most common sequences. T1 TSC and T1 TSC fat suppression. They may be done before and after contrast media injection. T2 TSC and T2 fat suppression DWI or diffusion weighted. Stir TSC, which is an inversion recovery sequence. Dynamic scan, which is an axial 3D T1. Silicone only, silicone suppression, and MR spectroscopy. T1 weighted imaging is performed with or without fat suppression, as well as before and after contrast media administration. T1 weighted images are useful for evaluating enhanced areas. T1 fat suppressed images are also done in the sagittal orientation. Some sites use Dixon sequ sequence as a fat suppression technique. A non-fat suppressed pre-contrast T1 demonstrates fat at hyperintensity. The normal fatty tissue, enlarged lymph nodes, and fatty lesions all appear hyperintense in a T1 weighted image. By canceling out the fat signal within the breast through fat suppression, the signal of fatty lesions should also get suppressed. This occurs in cases of hematomas, lipomas, and fat necrosis. Fat suppression is also important in contrast enhanced T1 of the breast. Because lesion its identification in breast MRI relies upon the subtraction of pre and post contrast images. In pre contrast T1, 
The bright fatty signal from the breast could be a variety of pathology. By canceling out the fax signal within the breast and then using subtraction images after contrast enhancement, identifying enhanced lesions becomes more accurate. Enhancing lesion depends on wash-in and wash-out rates, as well as the pattern of enhancement to identify if they are malignant or benign. We will discuss this more thoroughly later. T2 TSC and T2 fat suppression. And T2 weighted images. Water fluid has hyperintense signal. That is why in T2 water containing lesions or autonomous lesions have intense signals. These lesions could vary from cyst or inflamed lymph nodes to edema surrounding a malignant tumor and a fat necrosis. Fat also appears hyper intense on T2, which is why fat suppression, T2, is important to cancel out the fat signal to help identify the type of lesions. Lesions that appear hyperintense on T2 and T2 fat sat are cysts, fibroadenomas, malignant lesions, glandular tissue, and inflammation of the mammary ducts. This is a T2 weighted image. And this is a T2 spare. This image shows a malignant mass lesion. T2 and T2 fat suppression are also done in coronal slices. Coronal imaging has its advantage in reduced heart pulsation artifacts and enables bilateral imaging of the breast. As mentioned in module one, coronal images best demonstrate the circular body of the breast and the axillary tail. The glandular lobes surrounding the nipple are surrounded by the fat appear in their anatomical shapes of the fat suppressed coronal T2. Coronal images show the exact location and extension of the malignant and benign lesions in the four quadrants of the breast. <laughs>